Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me. This is Melissa Hood with Tame Your Brain O, August 18th, Friday, 2016. Stick with me for a few seconds, and we're fixing to be taking off here shortly, leaving you with a little Boston. Great way to start the day, man. All right. All right, man. So, God, there. Remember them? That makes me feel old. All right. So let me tell you what's been going on. Um, first of all, that I have a very rocking—I mean, a high-powered prophetic word. And I guess I need to cut them off because <laughs> I guess <laughs> it is. Faith is more than a feeling. Okay, let me cut it off. So, anyhow. Let's get started because last night the Lord wouldn't let me go to sleep. Um, and I, I didn't know it was God at first. Actually, I, I actually uh, was think, just really, really tired. I'd gone to bed late anyway. And so at about 1230, the Lord said, hey, man, I want to talk to you. And so I finally thought, wow, OK, this late. How stupid of me. I should have known it was you. So long story short, the Lord started, I started getting into my quiet time and reading uh, the word and finding out what God wanted to say. And boy, did he have something to say. So I've got about six pages of notes when you start going through pretty quickly. If you've got your notepads out, try to take notes as best you can. If not, come back and listen and listen again. But definitely please forward this on because this is a right now word for where we're at as a body. And many people right now are at the end. This is per Chuck Pierce, by the way. Um, they're at the end of their financial provision. They're kind of wondering what's next, and they feel this pressure all around it. And so they're wondering what in the world is going on. But today I've got a word that will explain there are just certain people going through that pressure, actually. And so especially leaders for this hour, and there are three types of leaders that are going through that type of pressure. And it's, it's high-velocity pressure around us. And so uh, Chuck Pierce called it the dire straits. Um, well, I, where I actually believe that many exited that last week, um, but we're still feeling a pressure as well around some of us um, as far as what's going on in the atmosphere and what we're sensing politically, what we're sensing in the spirit within our nation, around the world, with Christians around the world. And so if you're under the gun, take a listen. Hopefully this will help you. So Lord says uh, um, he's been showing me that a lot of leaders have been uh, they've been under a lot of uh, pressure, like I said. They've been having a hard time hearing by the Spirit. And this is a demonic strategy, by the way, because what this allows for is it allows the false prophets and the false teachers to come in. Okay, They've always been around, but not as prevalently as they're now being ushered in by the devil. And so when we're having a hard time hearing anyway, this is where he can slip them in and slip them into your pathway, into your atmosphere. So like Chuck Pierce said too, you need to be binding the snakes away from your path. These are snakes. Uh, I, I, I would love to voice who I think some of them are, but that's not probably for me to judge. I, I probably need to leave that for God to judge. But I stay away from certain people um, in media that I once to even, that I once listen to. There are only certain voices that God has me listening to right now. And it's because I know and I trust that they hear the Lord. And I know it's a right now word all the time. And some of these leaders, you wouldn't, um, they're so high up in the spirit. Sometimes they're misinterpreted for being like, they're like, how does that connect to God kind of a thing. But that means that you've kind of chosen to stay a little bit lower in the spirit. So sometimes we can, we can be running parallel to the truth and not even know it. Have you had ever had one of those times where you, God's given you revelation about something? I'm going to pray here in a second. But um, he's given you revelation about something that you thought was truth when the whole time you were deceived. And you were thinking, ah, how could I believe that? And so then after that truth is revealed to you, all this new different paradigm opens up to you, a new way of walking, thinking, talking, acting, and believing in the Lord opens up brand new doors of opportunities and things like that. That's how close we can be to the truth. And that's how close we can also be to blessing and still walk in deception. That's how cunning the devil is. So let's pray real quick before we get going too far into this. I don't want to leave God out of it because he definitely needs to be front and center. So, Father God, I just thank you for today. I thank you for what you've shown me last night, Jesus. I invite you here. I ask you, Lord, to speak through me, Father. You said, whoever two or more agree, we can ask you for anything and you do it. 
Lord, I've got people in agreement with me over this message. Father, I pray that you're also moving into my prayer time with me after this, Lord, with our prayer team. And Lord, you said, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Father, give all the listening eyes and ears, hearts and eyes to listen and to see. Lord, with um, Psalms 119.18, give us eyes to see and ears to hear with acute prophetic accuracy. Lord, use my prophetic gifting. Use the revelatory gifting. Use the Barnabas gifting. And also bring in peace. Lord, just kind of bring in peace and answers, Lord, and showing us the way in which we walk. So Lord, we thank you for this. And we bless you in Jesus' name. So we need to be real careful about people that we allow into our spiritual atmospheres. The Lord said, I mean, show me that his love is starting to get so strong on vessels right now. And, and a lot of people are like, we're seeing the racism problems and we're seeing um, different issues in uh, the denominations. And the Lord has been telling me, he said, you know, I didn't have a banner. I never carried a banner. He said, the only banner I carry is love. He goes, because God says, I am love. That's what he's saying. And so when you have like the Baptists, the Methodists, the Presbyterians, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, you've got marrieds, unmarrieds. Uh, gosh, we could go on and on. I mean, male, female, all these different banners. The Lord says, lay your banners down. You, you're going to have to if you want to come up higher in this new place and dimension of my spirit. He goes, because love is blind. And the Lord says the spirit of the Lord is going to become so strong on the remnant's vessel. There's 144,000 plus the ones that God says, I'm no respecter of persons. What I do for one, I do for all. Anybody who would call my name, come on. He's saying, come on in. And so he's He's opening himself up to a multitude of people who are like, who are having their eyes open in this hour. And so he's going to be using the remnant though. The remnant are the key in this hour. The remnant of leaders, that's what they are, 144,000, the ones that have been put into place. I'm going to get farther into this as we move forward in this conversation. They're being moved into the second heavens, being used because of the high-level intercession to push all the demonic out. And we're being like Jesus, if you can, if you can uh, imagine Jesus with wings like an eagle. Half of his right wing, a third of his right wing was taken out when the third of the angels fell. Well, this 144,000 is replacing that third. So we're moving up. We're sitting with God in heavenly places. We're using his right-handed authority, the strong arm of the Lord, the direct power of God. We're moving in his narrative as well as our own narrative. That's first and second-hand narrative. So I don't want to get too far into that and get away from this. But that's where we're at as a body. We're standing in that lofty place of the second heavens where the enemy once stood, but he's now in the earth. So that's why we're seeing so much manifestation of the demonic around us. So the Lord says we're going to become colorblind, though, and people, we're, the love of God is going to get so strong on many that all would become colorblind to their true brothers and sisters in the Lord. So we're going to know his people by their love. That's the one indicator, the only indicator we'll know them by. You'll sense it. If you don't sense it, hold that vessel at arm's length until you can see what kind of fruit they're bearing. So the enemy, Lord says the enemy was trying to hinder the true new leaders from rising up because they seem to be stagnated and moving forward. The Lord says, quit analyzing everything. The Lord, uh, he actually chastised me three times on Wednesday because I was getting kind of, I was getting worried about some personal circumstances going on and I called one of my pastors and they told me the truth. They said, you're analyzing everything. You, your mind, what I've noticed about you all the time is that you analyze everything. Whereas at one time you were just trusting God. You were just in that place of peace, moving forward with God, letting him move any way he chose to move in his own timing, in whatever direction he wanted to move you in. And then you tried to figure it all out. So that was the first indicator. The second indicator came when my prayer team partner said it without knowing that the first team person had said it. And then third that night, another pastor that I listened to also confirmed it. So God confirms himself in twos or more. And so God is confirming his word to a lot of leaders in this hour where they're starting to look at, look at their circumstances around them and trying to figure out what's going on. What is this all about? God says, quit trying to figure it out. Just follow me. I'm taking you somewhere good. So, um... Then I got uh, the scripture yesterday, and by the way, I'm going to say this to you before I go forward. Listen to everything 
don't just say, oh, I don't know what this, this is going. This doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Yes, it is. God's going to wrap this whole baby up at the very end, and you're going to understand exactly how to put the pieces together because I'm a, I'm a information gatherer for the Lord. So I'm giving you big picture right now. I'm, I'm, synop I'm wrapping up all the facts that he's been moving into our spiritual atmospheres to help you better understand what's going on around you. Stick with me. So Zechariah 4, 6 is the scripture. The Lord has given us for this hour. It says, not by might, not by power, but by God's spirit will all these things be done in our lives. By God's spirit only. By God's spirit of love. By your ability to come up into the spirit of love. Okay, so when you're choosing to stay over here in religion or an unbeliever, you negate your abilities. You negate all your options. You're shutting yourself off. As a matter of fact, these two groups will be joined. God says many in the end times will fall away. So you don't want to be caught up in that group, people. You want to be making sure you're purifying your vessel, letting him deliver you. If you know you have weaknesses, hit your knees and let him get it off. Let him get it off your vessel. So you'll be purified in this hour to come up into the spirit of love. God says he can't dwell where sin is. And so he, you have to make room for him in your vessel. The kingdom of God is within you. So he's expanding himself within your vessel to take a full residency so that the fullness of the glory of God can fall down on you and bring favor and blessing and destiny. Okay, fast forward. Let's move on. So the Lord says the new leaders are the leaders of Judah, the young lions. The Lord's been talking to me about the young lions, the young lions. And the Lord says the young lions are... The new leaders for this hour because they're praisers. Okay, there's only one faction of them though. There's actually three factions within the young lions. And this is because God is in their midst when they're when they're when there's adversity in, in our lives. So God is in our midst when adversity is in our lives. But the Lord says the one key for these young lions, and he says many have gotten caught up in this, is that there's no room for grumbling, even if in your heart. And, and, and if you've gotten into this place and wondered, you know, God, I'm so bitter. I'm so bitter about the way my life has turned out. And the Lord says, but I, that you're missing my point. My point is that I used the bitter waters, Naomi, and you became, you only became Mara for a season. But then I sweetened her waters again. And the bitterness was used to drive out the old, per Ron Carpenter, Drive out the old things that have happened in your past, the old mindsets, the old memories, the old things. It's like a carterization tool, if you will, before God pours in the sweet waters of destiny, the sweet waters of blessing, the sweet waters of new direction. And so the Lord says, be praising him all the way through. That is a key warfare tool, is praise. It's the only thing that will get you up. And the Lord says, Praise pulls us up above the warfare and into new places of destiny. And God says to remind you, has he ever not shown up? I mean, really? I mean, he, maybe in the very last second of the very last hour, but has he ever not shown up? Because God's a faithful God. And so the Lord's reminding his warriors of this. And the Lord says the warriors in the earth are the young lions. We are the 144,000 replacing the third of the angels that fell. We, this is the key, we, the young lions, are Judah. We're Judah. So I'm going to have a t-shirt made with that on it. We are Judah. <laughs> and God has to take us down before he raises us up into the second heavens. That means we're going to have, that's why we had to go through the bitter waters before he raises us up. Because you never know what you had until it's gone and stripped away. But then once you've been raised up, you didn't, you realize you're not missing out on anything. Because you realize how far God has brought you in the purpose of all the pain. See what he's doing? He uses the pain to forge us into that new place. And so where many people have gotten so distraught and they're just like, this makes no sense. I've served you all my life. I've done everything I know to do. I have people judging me because they they think, well, she or he deserve he deserved that. She deserved that. You see how they deal with people. And in the whole reality of the matter is, thank you for reminding me of that word. These people are were truth people. Judah, all of Judah, are straight truth warriors. Double-sided sword of truth, by the way. Double truth. Not mercy and truth like the normal swords go. Most Christians have mercy and truth. One side on each sword. On, all right, one side, one part on each side of the sword. I can't think today, sorry. 
Judah are double-sided truth people. God sends us into the darkest places. So we tick a lot of people off. I'd like to use a stronger word than that, but that's inappropriate for this broadcast. But we have a tendency to tick a lot of people off because we'll just come in and tell you the straight up truth. So what, the, what does the devil do? He creates this screwed up PC tool, political correctness, which I hate and I refuse to participate in. He, he just, he creates that to where you can't speak the truth to people. So what he's trying to do basically to society is make society spiral down more and more in their dysfunction. Because when you don't deal with issues, when you only operate on the surface and you only allow people to deal with truth just so far down, just it, as far down as it makes them comfortable, then when you have true truth people walk in and we're like, bam, clanging these people upside of their head with our swords, we're like, get your butt in gear. You think this is appropriate for any human being to behave this way? I don't care if you're a Christian or not. Your behavior is inappropriate. And then they're like, uh, 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 it's like totally discombumerates them because they're like, what do I, I know what they're saying, but it's so much truth that either they're going to receive it. I mean, it'll cut down to the joints and marrow. These are the types of warriors God is raising up in this hour. Make no mistake about it. I make no apologies for who Christ made me to be. I know that people around me know exactly who I am. They're afraid to call on me unless they absolutely, positively want to hear the truth of God. Because they know I'm not going to mince God's word. I won't deny what the Lord has to say. I'll let him use my vessel wholeheartedly. And usually it's full throttle, 100% on. No holding back. And so... People, when you'll know people when they really want change is when they're really ready to acknowledge truth about themselves. They're really ready to humble themselves before their Lord. And they're ready to do things His way. They're ready to go get this mess stripped off of their vessel so that they can abide in that holy place with Him and in right fellowship with other believers in a healthy way. Instead of being drawn like light draws, like unhealthy people draw unhealthy people. Hurting people draw hurting people. Abusive people draw abusive people. Perpetrators draw victims. These are familiar spirits, people. So healthy people draw other conduits of good, healthy people. And these are the young lions. They're the ones that refuse to compromise God's truth. Is that you? I hope it is. I hope it is. As a young lion. But God had to take us down these hard paths before he raises us up into the second heavens to rule and reign as it, at his right hand. Then the Lord showed me a vision. And the Lord showed me a vision of a tsunami wave. And he, he asked me, let me see the wave pull out away from the beach. And then it came roaring back in. He goes, that's what it's going to look like when our blessings come in. Where the blessing and the glory wave pushes and brings overflow into our pathways. And the Lord says, the gatekeepers are the main focal point of this hour. I is one. We're few and far between people. So the Lord says that the three types of people within the young line group are the priest, the Levitical priest, the singers or the praisers, and the gatekeepers. Okay? These first two got off a little bit. And I'm going to go into that in a second. But the gatekeepers, had it not been for the gatekeepers and their intercessors, their high-level apostolic intercessors, they're the ones that didn't get swayed over here into deception with the spirit of religion, the true gatekeepers. Some of them did. Most did not. But they they stuck to their course. They, they prayed when they didn't want to pray. They took the hits when they didn't want to participate anymore. And they're standing upright right now so that the rest of the body can come on across the Jordan. So the, Levit the Levitical priest can come on across the Jordan. We stood in that positioning. I'm going to get into that in a second too. But the Lord says, God says to tell you, I'd have you go up to your station now so that they might prepare, they might prepare and be attentive and uh, prepare you in your heavenly positions That as I, as I direct. I'm sorry, guys. Let me say that again so I'm more clear. The Lord says, I would have you go up to your stations now so that you might be prepared and attentive in your heavenly positions as I direct you. You can watch men. You'll be able, you can call out on the pathway, showing people the way upward above the, the, above the fray, knowing how to pray and into safety. The Lord says, you are my Hezekiahs, being able to see the enemy for miles on end as the tsunami of overflow comes in. Jesus says, look again, Hezekiah, look again. 
because your blessings are about ready to overtake you. Hezekiah, that's an anointing the Lord puts on a vessel and an intercessor where he takes it, takes the intercessor up into their high tower and he allows them to see the onslaught of the enemy from miles on in from that point in their life. So they'll always be a thousand laces ahead of the enemy. But he also lets them see the blessings getting ready to overtake them. So let's just be careful uh, about the cursings that other people are trying to speak over you in this hour. They're the cursing of the Pharisees. Also cursing from unbelievers because of God's spirit being poured out on all flesh. So their words are ignited. I mean, but this is the, this is the crux for... Uh, the lions of the tribe of Judah in this hour. And this is the best part of this conversation. The Lord says he'll turn the word cursings of your enemies into blessing in this hour so that all would see you get blessed based on Psalms 23, 5, his banqueting table. The Lord says, I'll set a banqueting table up for you before my enemies, before your enemies, excuse me, and his too. They're his too because God's enemies are your enemies and vice versa. And so, God says, if I be for you, who can be against you? But the Lord says his main motive in doing this for his lions right now, for the Judah tribe, is that many of these people have done exactly what God's asked them to do. They've been misjudged. They've been persecuted. They have been treated with many injustices. And the Lord says that these people that did all these things against you, Judah, he said they thought they could control your destiny. They thought they could control your blessing. This ranges from family members. This ranges from employers. Sorry, I'm getting some coffee. Um, ranges um, into personal friendships that you once had that now God has rid you of because they're of these people's refusal to come forward. And so the Lord says, by your entering into the Spirit, Zechariah 4, 6, not by my, not by power, but by God's Spirit, says the Lord, the blessings are starting to overtake you to where the, the, the enemy can't stop... Um, what God has set before you. The Lord says, I want every one of your enemies to see who is the Lord of your life, and that they never, nor will they ever have control of your life, your blessings, your livelihood, nor your supernatural protection or destiny. For only I am, says the Lord, only I am the I am. The enemy is not. The enemy is the little G, God's big G. So you can rest easy in knowing that moving forward. Now, this is a real tumultuous time for a lot of us. And we're watching the news and you're watching the politics and you're hearing about all these things within this crazy presidential administration. And the Lord says not not to worry about what you see with your eyes because your eyes will fail you, Judah. You've got more power and authority over all this. As long as you abide in the spirit with Zechariah 4, 6, the Lord is going to supernaturally protect you. And people, the Lord says we need this is hard for me to say. But I'm going to say this. This goes against every bit of my being, but I'm going to obey the Lord. It's one of those, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do things. But the enemy darn well knows what he's using their vessels to do. So the enemy, the devil, is the enemy of your soul, not people. Okay? That's that's the hardest thing to keep in the right perspective in this hour. Not their skin color. Not their political affiliation. Not anything like that. Not their, what do you call it, their religious affiliation, none of it matters. None of that matters. It's all about who has the true love of God abiding in them. God says, you'll know my people, whatever leadership capacity they're in, by their love, because this love, that love of God in them will drive their actions to stand for righteousness. And so this is something that we need to keep in the right focus in this hour. And the Lord says there are key people in this hour being positioned. The three positions that I've been talking to you about the whole time are the Levites, the Levitical priest, the praisers, people who are called to sing for Christ, and the gatekeepers, those called to command angels. That be me and others like me. The Lord says there's a warning that comes with this. There are going to be some people who, who cursed you in past seasons who will demand to be a part of your success in this new season. The Lord says, throw their things out of your room. I've designated only for you and take your position. The Lord says, I say, absolutely not. These types of people who refuse to stand with you when you're going through do not deserve and nor does God give them the right to stand with you in heavenly places when they have chosen not to come up. That means they're going to be riding on your coattails and they're not going to be hand, able to handle the warfare that's going on around you. They'll be affected by it and they'll be used as a distraction of the enemy against you. So when God tells you, you need to remove those relationships away from you to stay 
moving forward. So warning two, the Lord says, because this process of purifying these three groups have taken longer than expected. Many from within these groups have walked away from their positions. Never been talking about that earlier. That would be the Levitic. Some of the Levitical priests walked away and some of the singers walked away reluctantly. The singers did it reluctantly. A lot of the priests have quit the priesthood because they felt like God had betrayed them or abandoned them. And because they felt like they, the enemy got them. And this is going on still, by the way, in this hour where the enemy comes at people with the lie of who really cares about what you have to say? Is my message relevant? And the Lord says, absolutely. And this is why your message is relevant. Only you can preach or teach the message that God has. Only you for your life and for others around you. Each individual vessel has a life message. So, <clears throat> pardon me, when we believe the lie that our message is irrelevant, what happens is that we shut off that gift, we shut off the body to receiving the gift of Christ in us, and so God wants you to know the last thing you want to do is shut off his message in you. You are relevant. So this is why the Levitical priests walked away. And the singers reluctantly walked away. And it's because they naturally are praisers. They just are always praising. So it was kind of like hard for them to stop praising because it's what they do. It's what they were put into the earth to do was to be played as an instrument for the Lord into the body of Christ to bring everybody up in heavenly places. And the Lord says the only reason the enemy didn't totally take us, take us over to take us out was because of the gatekeeper's refusal to leave. They refused to leave their positions. Thank God. And let me let me tell you about this as an intercessor. There have been days that I wondered for a year and a half when my teams were praying if it was even making a difference. Because we seemingly were praying the same prayers over and over, praying the word of God only, praying the same word of God over and over until we hit this one and a half year mark. And we started seeing all these huge breakthroughs of every single thing we've been praying and prophesying the word over for the last year and a half prior. And it was just a com confirmation of the way that the Lord had used our vessels. And it was a it was a life lesson, actually, in the spirit of teaching me to persevere. And, and even though I don't understand what's going on, even though I don't think it's making a difference, it made a huge difference because it pulled us up to this huge high place in the spirit. And it got us out of these bad places that we were walking in prior. So we're, we're booking at about 27 minutes right now. Please stay with me. It's a little bit longer, but it's worth it's worth the listen. So just hang tight because I'm, I'm wrapping it up probably in about 15 minutes. Okay, you got that with me? So anyhow, so that's what happened with the gatekeepers. And the Lord says, after today, this is key. This is really key. The Lord says, the temple of God will move to full completion within the remnant only. Only the lines of the tribe of Judah. Only this 144,000. Pardon me? And like in Joseph's day, our grain houses will have been readied for the drought that's coming. Okay? So that's what this is where it's starting to get real thick with the truth in this part of the word. I need you to listen from this point on. And all these pieces are going to start connecting. Because when God wraps it up, I'm getting hit with the anointing right now as I'm speaking with you. When God starts wrapping it up, you're going to be going, oh my God, oh my gosh, what's going on, Lord? Forgive me for saying your name again. But that, it's like one of those aha moments like, oh my God, the reality of the matter is huge. So, and the gatekeepers who maintain their positioning will be installed as Joseph's on the mountains in the land so that God's people don't perish. These are gatekeepers who allow things to come in and out. They're always watching and making sure what's coming in is purely of God. They don't want anything unclean in the land. And so they're watching in this hour and making sure people's hearts are aligned, who they're allowing into their atmospheres. These are gatekeepers in families, gatekeepers in workplaces, gatekeepers in churches, gatekeepers in education, in government, in business, in uh, God, media, art. Um, you label it. All the seven mountains. That's all included in these places. But they're in high volume places. So the higher they up on the, or higher they're at up on the mountain within the mountain that uh, Dr. Lance Walnut talks about. I want to give him a plug, too. Um, the higher they are, um, the, the higher the velocity of warfare will be. So if you're called up to that level, that means you have to have a pretty, a pretty pure heart in order to operate on that level so that you don't take high volumes of warfare. And you're going to have to be praying anyway because of being that high in the spirit if God's called you up on that level. My hair is all funk-a-dunk there. So who cares? So... Many, many, many 
will come up to the to into the thing of the spirit of truth because of these Josephs. And so the Lord says that this is the many, many, many are also um, considered people that um, are connected to us. They're like people. God says, I'm no respecter of persons. What I do for one, I do for all. And so there are people who anybody that are rightly connected to these gatekeepers, these Levitical priests or these praisers for this hour who've chosen to stay in alignment with the Lord. God says, I'm going to extend the blessing outward onto their land as well. For staying rightly connected, for choosing like to be an Elisha to your Elijah. Okay? That's that dual purpose anointing where they refuse to let go. So praise God for them. Praise God for God. So none of these three categories will be allowed to marry um, anybody whose hearts are not. This is for the singles, by the way. None of these three categories in the Levites, the singers, or the gatekeepers, especially the gatekeepers, will be allowed to marry anyone whose hearts are not as pure as their own. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. God says, I've set you apart. I've lifted you up for such a time as this. And many of you single people have been wondering, why have I been single for so long? Some of them are in their 40s. Some of us in our 50s. And, and most of us at this point, we're just kind of like, why bother? But the Lord doesn't want us to take that attitude. He wants us to know that it's because we're set apart for the end times, to serve in these end times. And God has somebody very, very specific for these single warriors. That's why he's never let you choose your own, like say in past times and when you've been watching everybody around you choose their own spouse. The Lord says, I have chosen each one of yours for you to serve as a helpmate in this hour, to be back to back with you as a warrior, to know that they're just as cunning, just as strategic, just as agile by the spirit as I've made you. So that's why it's so important for you to not go off on your own and try to make it happen on your own because you will create a storm around you. That's a nice way of saying that. <laughs> that's a very nice way of saying that. I won't go any further than that comment. So whatever. So everything, 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 we're going to move forward. Everything seems uh, to pull us all around us. It's it's everything around us seems like it's like it's pulling us in every direction at present. But know this: this pressure preparation time is to prepare us for what's coming. So the Lord says you're fixing to be busier in each of your fields than ever before. And so this whole thing right now, where where you're like coming into the end of September, you're coming to the end of your finances, and you're like, Lord, I'm bored. I'm tired of the season I'm ready to get going and Lord says you need to be preparing if I'm telling you to build an ark you need to be building that ark you need to be doing whatever it is I'm telling you to do to prepare you because once I launch this thing you're going to be so busy you're not going to know what to do with yourself okay you're going to have to hire people to help you so that's the say of the Lord and the Lord says he gave me the scripture that says uh, the wicked are punished in place of the godly and traitors in place of the honest and the Lord says, this is what's going to be happening in this hour, Lord, where the, where the enemy thinks that he's setting God's people up for punishment for something we've never even done. The Lord says, he's fixing to flip that thing, and it's going to revert back on their own heads. Esther 9.1, that's a thus saith the Lord with Romans 10.10. 10. And that was out of his book. It was a proverb, actually, out of my uh, scripture. I can give it to you last night. But then it, it evolved into a vision, and it says... The vision says that the pressure we're all feeling at present around us spiritually are the holy angels staving off the demonic because God is getting us into position. So I saw this vision of all of this. I was driving down the road and I wondered what it was until last night. But now I know of all this light around me holding back like waves of light. And I knew there were angels, but they were holding off the demonic. To where it couldn't just consume me and consume people like me. And so it's the same thing that's going on around you. And it's so that you can get into position as a warrior for Christ. And then the Lord, this is the coolest part. We're at the end of this. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus, for letting me wrap this up. We're hitting 35 minutes. But the Lord gave me the word Jasper, the prophetic word Jasper. And just this is what's so cool about this whole synopsis. This wraps this whole thing up into a nutshell. And I want you to listen. Jasper is the last stone that was placed into the priest's breastplate, okay? The first stone was Sardis. It was a red stone. Jasper is a clear stone, okay? It was clear. It represented total victory, all right? And on the Jasper stone, 
the name Benjamin was written. And it was broken down Benjamin. And Benjamin was Jacob's last son. Now, if you remember, Joseph's brothers had betrayed him. They And his only true brother was Benjamin. His blood brother was Benjamin out of all Jacob's sons. His other ones were stepbrothers. And so all the people that were supposed to have been his family, supposed to have protected him, supposed to have loved him and been in his court, except for Benjamin, turned on him because Benjamin was, I don't know if Benjamin was born. He was probably too young then. He was too young then. But Benjamin... The name of Benjamin means the son of my right hand, Judah. Haven't we just been positioned as the sons and daughters at God's right hand? And so the Lord says, um, the son of my power. It's the son of God's right hand or the son of his power. We're moving into God's full authority power now in this season. So the first of the last stones pointed to the first uh, coming of Christ when he was resurrected from the dead. That's why it's red. It represents the blood of Jesus atoning for our sins. The second high high stone or the second stone is the clear stone, which represents purification. It represents Jesus' second coming as the great high priest. And where we're moving into in this new place by the Spirit and bringing, ushering the kingdom of God into the earth. Jesus is coming to set up a kingdom. And um, let me see, let me see, let me see. We're all going through to prepare for his coming. So the conclusion in this, and wrapping this message up today, the betrayal that every Joseph has experienced in this hour, whether it be from your own family, church brothers, either past or present, even through political arenas, was all representative of Gideon's, the Gideon's army God is putting together with those who choose to keep and watch in this hour. Those three positions. Lord says they drink and they study with their eyes wide open, just like Gideon's army did, so that they are always prepared for battle. Remember Gideon's army, the 300 that he kept, they drank looking up so they could make sure and keep watch. They didn't drink with their faces down in the water. This is as thus saith the Lord. I want to thank you for joining me today. Um, if you don't track with memoirs about what the events are that are going on with my book, Memoirs of an ADHD Mind, I'll be at Sunset Valley Barnes & Noble tomorrow uh, for a going back to school book signing. I hope you can join me there. I'll be also... Oh gosh, I've got several radio shows coming up. My biggest pub, my first public speaking engagement comes up in Bowley, Oklahoma, October 7th, 8th, and 9th for the Master's Touch International Leadership Conference. Hope you can join us there. If not listening online, if that's an option, I'll let you know about that as well. But if not, catch some of my radio shows. I'll be posting it on Facebook, on Instagram, LinkedIn account, on my Twitter account. You can follow me on all four. And I would love to have you. I would love to have you listen and, and check it out. I do these prophetic podcasts weekly. That's as much as God has given me so far um, to do. And then I also do prophetic encouragements daily. And if you notice, and if you track with me, all my prophetic encouragements, pardon me, throughout the week, all accumulate into the podcast that's coming forward but it's usually even above and beyond that so track with me and know what god is doing in your life know what he's doing in the body from this information gather i'm here to serve you and to show you the way in which you're to walk god bless you know that i love you and that i do pray for you i'll check up with you soon